What I miss about living in New York City is the easy access to dim sum. And my favorite thing at dim sum is hagao. It's just this perfect little dumpling. It has shrimp inside and chestnut with a little bit of crunch. And then this beautiful translucent wrapper. It's elegant. It's like the king of dumplings for me. I'm gonna attempt to make hagao today. about if it's wise to make hagao gluten-free. Right now hagao in its glutinous glory is all mine. If I make it gluten-free I will have to share it with the husband. Since this is my first attempt in making hagao I should have a closer look and see how they are actually made and what ingredients are. So I will have to procure some hagao, find some recipes for the filling and then figure out how to make a gluten-free hagao wrapper. Okay, here's how some commercially made hagao looks like. Look at this beautiful translucent wrapper. Mm. I'm gonna try to make it, but I won't try to compete with a professional cook. I just wanna make sure that my hagao are on par with the frozen version in the Asian market. The hagao filling, as mentioned, is made out of shrimp, so I'm gonna start with my shrimp filling. And in this case, I bought frozen shrimp because they need to be deveined and I didn't want to do it all by myself. And here are my shrimp. They're still a bit frozen, so that's going to be interesting. An easier way to defrost the shrimp is to just run them under ice cold water until all of them are defrosted. So here are now my shrimp, which I made sure they're all defrosted. So I'm going to quick dry off my shrimp and I have to cut them. Not all of the shrimp are deveined. You can see it on the blue line which is running here through the shrimp. And I'm not gonna fish out the individual veins like right? So none of the recipes I looked over really told me how thick to cut them. So I'm thinking a dumpling is pretty small, so I probably wanna have one or two chunks of shrimp in each of the dumplings. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut them probably a centimeter to two centimeters, or which is about half an inch to an inch. So let's try that. I'm transferring the chopped shrimp to a bowl and now I'm getting ready to add the water chestnuts. I'm gonna open the can of water chestnuts and gonna drain them. So these are about 150 grams, which is around a quarter of the proportion of the shrimp. The idea is when I bite in my hagao, I taste the shrimp and then have a little bit of a crunch to it, which is from the water chestnut. But I don't want to have like a big crunch, I wanna have a little settled crunch. Since these chestnuts are already sliced, I just have to cube them now. If you think they're a system, no, I'm just chopping until they're small. Okay, now we're gonna start adding all the different sauces. Half a teaspoon of white pepper, a pinch of sugar, two teaspoons of sesame oil, two teaspoons of vegetable oil. I'm gonna mix it up. This looks like my hagao filling. Now to the very tough part, which is making the gluten-free hagao wrapper. When I look at the regular recipes, I'm seeing they're using wheat starch. Now, I have never heard about wheat starch before and I don't know actually the, the properties. So I will have to look that up later and learn more about it because this is very curious. And down the rabbit hole I go. I read somewhere that I can substitute wheat starch for corn starch. Now, will I be so lucky that it's a straightforward substitution, a one-to-one -one equal amount, or will I have to experiment more with it? Let's try to make the dough. I'm gonna try two different flour mixture and see which one is holding better during the steaming process and which will taste better. The first combo will be half corn and half potato starch. My other combination will be one-third tapioca, one-third corn starch, and one-third potato starch. So that's my first variation and that's my second variation. Both get a pinch of salt and a teaspoon of oil. I'm going to add now 80 milliliters of hot boiling water. And that's really important that it's boiling. I'm going to add the water to the first flour combination and start mixing it first with my spatula and then I'm going to knead it with my hand. I feel the clumps in the dough. It's still very sticky so I'm adding more cornstarch to it. I can feel slowly the clumps disappearing while I'm kneading the dough. It's getting pretty smooth now. The dough feels pretty good, so I set it aside. Now we're gonna go to number two. 
is that this version is much easier to knead and I don't feel as many clumps in it as in the other dough. And I don't know if it's due to the starches, maybe because the water sat a little bit longer. That, I don't know. Okay, that feels pretty good. Both doughs are ready now and I'm getting ready to make the hagao. The proper way now how to roll out a hagao wrapper would be to make small little balls and then roll them out of the cleaver and that sounds way too complicated and dangerous to me. I'm going to use a biscuit pepper instead. Rolling out the first dough, which has more cornstarch, I'm definitely noticing that it has much more elasticity. While I'm wrapping the hagao, I'm also noticing... Yeah, definitely the first dough with more cornstarch makes it much easier for wrapping. So after having made a few hagaos, I have now a better idea what works for me when I'm trying to wrap them. So what I learned was, I'm going to try to center my filling. The next thing is, with my finger bowl, I'm going to wet the edges of my hagao and I'm going to take my wrapper and here's where the tricky part starts so I'm going to fold it a little bit and then with my finger I'm going to pinch the edge together then I'm going to do my first weave and push with this finger here the filling inside stretching the dough a teeny little bit now I'm making my next fold and I'm going to continue folding the dough wrapper till I have all of the edges woven now at the end, I'm going to take my finger again and pinch the dough in here to fold it. Now I'm going to pinch that with my fingers and squeeze the top, creating this edge to my dumpling. So it's kind of fun seeing how it progressed from this first attempt of a hug out to maybe 60, 70 hug outs later, how much better they look. Oh yeah! It's time for lunch though, so it's time to steam the hagao and have some. To steam my dumplings, I put some water into a pot. I'm going to put the hagao with the first flour combination on the bottom of the bamboo tray and I'm going to put the dumplings with the second flour combination on the top tray. I'm going to put the timer now in 6 minutes. This is number 2 and this one is number 1. Let's try it out. Oh yeah, that's hagao. That's good. The wrapper is really nice and chewy on number one, which is normally a good thing for a hagao. Two's wrapper is much more delicate, and it's a little bit too chewy for me. If I pick a dough, I will use number one. First, it is chewy, but not as chewy as number two. And the other reason why is it was much easier to roll out and wrap because it had more elasticity, which definitely helps not being a dumpling master and all. Let's see how well I am doing against the commercially made hagao. So this is my hagao with the second dough, that's my hagao with the first dough, and that's the commercially made one. You can see a little bit of the shrimp shining through my dumplings, not quite as much, and certainly the shape is much better in the commercially made hagao than mine, but my hagao is a little bit more yellow. I guess I will have to live with that. Now, flavor-wise. Flavor-wise and texture-wise, it can definitely compete with the commercial version. Mission accomplished. If you enjoyed this video of learning how to make hagao, please subscribe to my channel and check the bell to get notifications about any upcoming video. Thanks so much. i see you next week. Bye.